Hello. Yeah. Hi. So, hi, everyone. Uh, so, this session is about the project update of the June projects. So, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Hong Bing Lu. I'm from the Huawei. I'm the June project team lead. And with me is Su Mutos. He's a uh, June core reviewer. So, uh, this session is about the June project update. So, first, to introduce uh, what is Jun. Jun is an open stack container service. It provides API to provisioning and manage uh, containers without any virtual machines. And it can deliver the container with uh, speed and simplicity because it can start a container in a few seconds with a single command, and that is possible. And with the Jun, you can specify the arbitrary number of memories and arbitrary number of CPUs. And this is different from the LOAS. So in NOA, you need to select from a set of favors. And, but in June, you, can, you have the flexibility to choose a memory and CPUs. And also, the June is using the container as the first cast resource. So what it means is that you can use the keystone to provide the role base access control for in the level of individual containers. And there's a neutron port that is for each container. So each container will have the, all the features that is from the neutrons. It can bind mount the signal volume to the June containers. So you can store the data in the signal volumes. And all this feature is unique for the June and it's not provided by other service. So why? Why we create this June project? That is because we saw there's uh, increased demands on using containers on OpenStack. And the general question we are going to ask is how to use a container on OpenStack. And of course, there's, there's uh, many solutions that is there. But uh, in general, there's two kinds of solutions. The first kind of solution is to integrate the container with NOAS. Example of that is Nova Docker and Nova LXD. The second type of approach is to install a container orchestration engine, for example, a Kubernetes, on top of a set of virtual machines that is provided by Nova's. Example of that is Matlam and QSpread. So for Nova Docker in particular, it basically what it does is to provide drivers for Nova's to allow user to use the NOAA APIs to manage the Docker containers. And this approach is satisfied for the use case that require to achieve a container as a virtual machine. But in general, and container and virtual machine are different. Uh, they share some set of operations, but there's some operation that is specific to the containers and not shared with the VMs. So if using the NOAA APIs, you are not able to access the feature that is specific to the containers, such as run and execute. So that's why we need to create a June project that has their own API that is dedicated for containers. And another approach of using container is using a, a project such as Magnum. And Magnum is, in general speaking, Magnum is a service that is allow users to provision a set of NOAA instances and install a COE on top of the NOAA instance. And eventually, a user can use the containers by use on the COEs. And there's a pros and cons of this approach. And this is all related to the models and how Matlam is deployed on COEs. So in Matlam, a COE is a resource that is belong to a talent. And Matlam doesn't allow uh, to share a COE between the users or between uh, or share a COE across the talents. They do that for the security reasons. And as a result, in Matlam, you, they provide a strong isolation between, for the containers of different talents, they have the strong isolation because the containers are running in their own COEs, so they won't interfere with each other. And at the same time, the cons is that this approach might need to a low resource utilization. Uh, this is because each COE is taking resource is heavy. 
it's still you need to have a set of virtual machines and each virtual machine need to run the control plane service of the COEs and each COE need to take a few foreign IP addresses, need to have the scene volumes that is for storing the data. And if user want the COE to be H8, there need to be an additional set of VM that is set up for as uh, redundancies. And so suppose if there's a cloud that has many users and many talents, each user want to create their own COEs to run the containers. And there will be a lot of COE in the cloud and that is taking a lot of resource and this is undesirable. So this problem is solving by Zoom because Zoom is using a centralized approach to manage all the containers, but still isolate container from different talents. And it also doesn't assume that the container has to run on the virtual machines and you have the choice to run the container on bare metals. Zoom is an alternative to Magnum? Uh, it's alternative of Magnum and Nova Docker. Yeah, you can say that. Um, I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, so this is a list of features that is we already implement in Pyte. And first is the container networks. We integrate with queries and rely on query to uh, network the containers by using neutrons. And we have provided a plugin that is for the heat so that you can do the container obstructions in a, by using a heat template. And we have the Horizon plugin that is provide a web UI for the Zoom. And Sue is the author of the Horizon plugin. So if any question, you can ask him. Uh, he's an expert. And so we have the filter schedulers. So it's used to filter the is you to schedule a container to a host. And we have a proxies, we implement proxies that is used to allow users to access the terminal of the container that's running and allow you to interactively enter a command and get the output. We have the OpenStack client integrations and we also have the API micro version that is implemented and we bump the versions for every API change that is incompatible, so we are make sure our API is reliable. So for Queen circles, for this release circle, there's a list of features that is we are planning, and right now we are in the middle of the release circle, so most of them are already implemented. So for example, right now we already implement the Cinder integrations. As a result, you can buy mount the Cinder volumes to the file system of the containers. And we are rolling, we are implementing a new feature that is called the capsule, which this feature is something that is similar to the Kubernetes pod. It is a set of container that is highly related and co-scheduled. It needs to be co-scheduled and co-located and it share the networks and share the volumes. We also have a feature that is implemented that is the PCI password and SIOV. And we have another session on Wednesday that is talk about this feature in details. And then the second type of container runtime we are going to introduce is queer containers. And this is alternative of the dockers. And there's a, a feature that is the, called the cow shell. This is in the UIs. It allows you to create a container that has a shell and allow you to enter the OpenStack command and so is over with these features. And finally, we have an installation guide so that if you want to install Zoom, you can use the guide. And it's published in the OpenStack docs in the official websites. So beyond the queues, uh, our focus is the Kubernetes integrations. So we are planning to have uh, Kubernetes connectors. And what it does is to register a node in the Kubernetes. And this node will have the infinite number of CPUs and memories, which represent a zone that is a cloud and have infinite com capacities. And for each pod that is scheduled to this special node, and the content, the pod will be managed by Zoom and launched by Zoom. So 
basically what this feature is going to offer is to allow you to use the Kubernetes to do the orchestration of certain containers. And beside that, we have a cell feature that is for the MFV use case, such as the NUMA topologies and CPU painting. And we are switching to the placement APIs, and we are going to support the thinner volume multi attach. So, for how to contribute, we have uh, IRC channels, and we hold a meeting every week. So, you are, everyone is welcome to join the meetings. And there's a few links that is, contain more information of these projects. And then, Jun, uh, Su is going to show a demo, a small demo. Uh, I will show you the container creation for simple web service. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me show some prepared network resources for the new container. And this is a uh, uh, folding IP uh, to the uh, association to the prepared port uh, to access the port from the private uh, public network. And this is a, a security group for web service. Uh, this allows to access HTTP from public network. So I am create container. Uh, click create a container. And we can create container only specifying a container image in this demo. I use Chris George, Docker, Alba, and Nginx. Uh, pull the image from Docker Hub and set command bin bash. And this container will start after creation. We can specify the number of CPU, memory size, and restart policy. Also specify connections by selecting network or port. If we do not specify connections, then we'll create a new port on the default subnet for the new container. In this demo, uh, specify the port I just made and add security group web and remove default security group. We can also specify working directory, environment variables, and the interactive mode. <coughs> interactive mode will enable should TTY and standard in now, also enable to access from web console via web socket. And also we can set labels to the container and schedule a hint for where the container should be placed. For now, only label filter is available. So we can set keys that include that in labels and other containers. <coughs> Finally, click create button and create container request is accepted. We can see the detailed information for the container. Waiting for creation finished, then click refresh. Okay. 
this container started after creation. So now this container is running. And this port, this has port 10011 that I made. Also security group web have been applied. The ports 443 and 80 are exposed by Docker as described in the image. By the way, uh, we can operate the container with item actions, update, stop, restart, pause and pause, execute command, send kill signals, and delete. <coughs> and now, uh, let me create the contents for the web service using web console. Create web root directory at slash bar slash www. And add web contents. This content will show you a hello container world message and a SVG image. Finally, learn Nginx. And at last, let me watch Access Log. So let's open the web page from browser on public network. Uh, then we can see the web contents provided by new container. And uh, the access is logged on the Nginx container. OK, uh, that's all. Thank you for seeing my demo. Thanks, everyone.